So we go to the third presentation for this morning. That's Jashen Tu, uh, Conceptual Transfer in L2 Motion Events by Japanese and Chinese Learners of English. Okay. Okay, so please let me share my screen first. Also, can you see the screen right now? Yes. Yeah, so, but can you see my notes? Yes, we can also see the notes. So maybe oh. you want to take that away. <laughs> uh, so I, I guess I'm right now in presenter's view, but- This is it, this is your, this is right. Now, now just at the bottom presenter view. Yeah, that's now, now it's correct. I think. Presenter view, presenter yeah. view. At, at the bottom, yeah. Let, you, this one, or, right? Well, yeah, if you go to the bottom and then uh, do present, oh. No, the, the previous screen, and then go to the very bottom. Then you should be able to. Yes, exactly there. Yeah, this there. One? Yes, that one. Yes, that's it. But yes. Yeah. Okay. I cannot see my notes very well. So sorry. How, how can I get this? But but I still can refer to my notes. Ah. Uh, So, sorry, sorry, how about this one? No? Ah, sorry, you, you're, you're muted. We, we, there's no notes for the first page, but I think we will see the notes on the following pages. I am struggling with this. Uh, I, I want to see my notes, but without this. Well, it doesn't word. matter. You can show the notes. We are a friendly group, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. In this note, can you see the screen, the smaller screen, right? You just can see the smaller screen, right? We, yes, we see we see all this, the, the previous and the next screen. We see them and your notes. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's pretty bad. Okay, I just let, let me just move on without notes. I guess I can remember some of them. <laughs> Let's hope. I'm sure. I'm sure. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Sorry. Sorry for this delay. So. Um, so today, um, my presentation title is Concept Transfer in Automotion Events by Japanese Chinese Learners of English. Okay, so um, let, uh, first um, is the background of this study. Um, so um, first I'm gonna talk about L1 studies on motion events. The lexic semantics in um, in motion events has, has really uh, figured out cross-linguistic differences in lexicalization patterns of motion events, right? Here we can see, tell me your typology, the verb print language, basically um, path is encoded in the form of verb, but uh, for man and cause, a supporting event are encoded in adjunct, um, namely satellite. Here is the Japanese example. I'm not going to, going to go through this. But for, um, but for satellite from language, it's this reverse case. We see path is often encoded in the adjunct satellite, but matter and cause as supporting events are often in the form of verb. It's Japanese, uh, this is the English example. But slobbing 2004 added equivalently framed language. Uh, although some disputes over uh, this kind of categorization, but we do see in Chinese case, like in Thai language in Chinese case, both path and man and cos, they are encoded in verbs. This is a Chinese example. We see um, run and enter. They can be they can be used as uh, independent verbs in Chinese. But problem is that expressions of motion events go beyond a single clause to, to be situated in discourse. So we can see cross linguistic differences in semantic components distributed in the discourse of motion events. So it's not about, about a single clause level, but about multi clause level. And researchers, they specified uh, um, the discourse of motion events in the following four aspects. How much matter is specified as matter salience, how people, how speakers break path into smaller segments as part segments, and how much ground is included as ground salience. In the end, how, uh, how people, uh, how much people devote the attention to describing static settings. 
instead of describing the dyna dynamic motion events as scene setting. Okay, first, um, manasadians. Manasadians is that S language and E languages have a larger and more diverse lexicon of manner verbs than V languages we know. For example, Spanish saltar, basically you have a lot of corresponding um, manner verbs in English, and this is the Chinese one. So compared to speakers of V language, we know speakers of S language and E language developed a narrative habit of specifying more manner in describing the same motion events. But how about path segments? Path segments, speakers of S language and E language tend to break the path trajectory into a larger number of smaller path segments than speakers of V language. What does this mean? I'm going to show you pictures. We know here we see a famous frog story. A boy is caught on this antler and he gets very angry and rushes to a cliff and stopped uh, and stops and, and throws the boy off the cliff and therefore leading to a pond. So we see slobbing and um, and we can break this actually the DS thing into four path segments, but not all speakers do this. Um, speakers like S language and E languages they tend to do this to the break them into smaller, a uh, larger number of smaller path segments, but speakers of V languages they tend to uh, constrain themselves from doing so. They may just, um, they may just narrating like two, two path segments, uh, on general. Okay, for ground salience, it's speak, speakers of S language tend to attach more ground elements than speakers of V languages and E languages. So this means the amount of minus ground verbs, uh, motion verbs without a ground attached are more outstanding in E languages and V languages. Okay, let's look at the picture. How, how do you describe this picture? You, you can see, okay, the dog falls down. You can see the dog falls down from the window and onto the ground. So from the window is the source of motion and onto the ground is the destination of motion. Whether you attach this with, whether you attach this ground elements with the verb or not, um, you, you know, basically it's because they can select this information based on the wording, based on the intention. Okay, last scene setting. Speakers and E languages and V languages they devote more attention to describing static set scene, which provides a physical context for motion events to happen. Let's look at this picture. I guess we can see the deer pushes them off the cliff and the boy and dog footing to small pound. In, alternatively, you can say the deer pushes them off the cliff and there is a small pound without, without describing the motion as a, a very dynamic motion itself, but just you um, elaborating the physical context where this motion takes place. So more and more intertopological variations have been found in studying these motion events at the level of discourse and distributed patterns of semantic components in discourse of motion events. Each language needs the specific analysis for more accurate characterization. So I already show you um, the, um, the cross-linguist differences in L1 discourse of motion events, but we know that, but, but how, how do speakers, they, what, do, how, what, what, what drives them to to, um, to give us such a different discourses on uh, different structures of discourses of motion events. I'm going to draw on uh, theories of uh, slobbing's uh, hypothesis, thinking for speaking hypothesis. So one fits one starts into available linguistic forms when constructing utterances in discourse. And as well as developed, uh, he argued the preverbal message planning is language oriented. So here we can see conceptual planning processes are brought to bear in using language. So, so this cross linguistic differences really have a cognitive, um, ha have this uh, language, have this cognitive consequences. It um, orients, drive and, and help speakers to think differently. But this still sounds very abstract, isn't it? So what, what exactly are those conceptual planning processes in constructing the discourse of motion events? I'm going to draw on the framework of Jarvis and von Stottenham and Luz they specify the possible processes of conceptual planning in using language, especially in establishing discourse. First, segmentation. Uh, speakers break down complex situation into its states, properties, events, and processes. And they select, select the subset of those conceptual components for verbalization. And this structure, and this structure, this, this selected components based on the different perspectives. So 
when they take different perspectives, it structures them in a very different way. But what does this mean? What, what are these to do with uh, motion events discourse? I'm going to argue that manic salience is about whether how much information you select this component of mana for, for verbalization, whether you have intention to select uh, much mana information, as well as ground. Ground is also about selection of components of ground for verbalization. You can just give motion events with no ground information, but you can select the ground to attach the ground to uh, the motion verbs. But, but path segment is that you how, how you segment the com complex trajectory, as I already showed you, um, the deer scene. How, how deer, the deer in the very beginning gets very angry to uh, dumping them into the pond, they fall into the pond. This complex trajectory, how speakers segment them into smaller path segments and to, into a smaller paths, sub, sub paths. But uh, last scene setting, I, I would argue this is the um, perspective driven structuring of motion events. So whether you take a more dynamic perspective to narrate the motion events, or you simply just take a more static perspective to narrate the whole motion event, events, then you're gonna end up having, you're gonna end up describing the physical context if you take uh, a more static perspective. So, so far for L1 studies, and we uh, reviewed L1 studies and the possible conceptual planning process, underlying conceptual planning processes in this establishing the discourses of L1 motion events. Okay, about L2 motion events. I'm going to argue, argue for two points. The previous L2 studies ex exclusively focused on lexicalization patterns of motion events. No study explicitly explored how L2 MS come to construct the discourse of motion events in L2. Second point, there were few studies that touched upon distributed patterns of semantic components in discourse of motion events, but the way of using stimuli is questionable. Second, path segments, grant salience, as well as attention to dynamism are understudy for e-language learners. About first point, I'm not going to illustrate this one by one, but we do see a lot of studies going on in learning uh, in um, on L2 learners whose L1 and L2 belong to different typological patterns. But if you zoom in to find that, the vast majority of these studies really focused on analyzing how L2 learners map path and manner as well as cause onto lexical items within a cause. So there are a few studies which touch upon the density of semantic components in discourse of motion events in L2 narratives, like, listed, like studies listed here. They study uh, Chinese, Japanese, as it was a Danish learners of Spanish. Um, but I, I'm going to argue three points. First point is that the data were elicited in a scene by scene fashion. So this is, this. I, uh, they asked, the experimenters asked um, participants to narrate page by page using frog story, or they're using like several, uh, several minute um, animations, but they stop at each scene. So at, when a scene is finished, they asked um, participants to, to narrate scene by scene. So this actually doesn't help us very much <clears throat> in studying how language learners, they treat this whole story as a whole, and they, they plan the whole story and how they plan the discourse of the whole story. And the second point I'm going to uh, argue is that past segments, grand salience of attention to dynamism are understudied for e-language learners, as, as far as I am aware. Third point is that no deep discussion over how thinking for speaking conceptual planning process works in constructing L2 discourse of motion events. When I say uh, conception planning process, I mean segmentation, selection, and perspective driven structuring. It's five minutes to go. Okay, so now we need a, a study to explore um, learners to guided by how, how they're guided by this conceptual planning process to this, establish the discourse. Okay, so uh, since I have a bit less time, I'm going to do this very quickly. So this is the emotion events in English, Chinese, and Japanese. And these are the, um, the, the, um, the language differences in three languages. <clears throat> so research question is, how do Chinese and Japanese learners guided by language specific conceptual planning process come to structure discourse of emotion events in L2 English? <clears throat> 
and to be more specifically how they select mana and ground, how they segment parts, trajectories, and structure motion events from a dynamic or static perspective, O2 production. Uh, methodology part is that I used Frog Story. Here is the uh, summary of the participants' data. I, uh, 15 Japanese and Chinese speakers involved, and as well as native speakers of English. Procedures that they're going to read the story in five minutes, and they uh, they write the story down first in O first in O2, then in L1. An instruction is that they first plan the whole story. Then they are not required to narrate page page, but at their own space, at own pace. Finally, they do a questionnaire. So data were coded. Um, I have a scoring system for this. I'm going to jump this. And statistical analysis with the help of Kods Miwa at Nagoya University. I used leading mixed facts modeling and I used Emmings as a postdoc test to identify the specific pairs that differ most. Okay, here is the result for Mana Salience. We do see that uh, Japanese cases really stand out. And we also see a huge decrease um, in Chinese L2 data. And here is the statistic results. We see Japanese case stand out and Chinese specify as distinguished L1 and L2. And part segments, we see Japanese case stand out as well as predicted by L1 studies. And, but, but we see a small change happened when they when in L2. So they are more English-like in L2. And here is the statistical results. I'm going to show them. And for minus ground verbs, we see Chinese case stand out as predicted by L1 studies. But we see a small change. We see a change happened in L2 data. They are more English-like in L2. And we also see scene setting. Japanese case and Chinese case both stand out. And but we see change in Japanese case. They are more English-like in scene setting. We also see this change is very meaningful because this uh, because we see um, significant difference in Spanish in between English and Japanese L2. So this question part is that I'm going to answer this question. So generally speaking, L2 performances demonstrate transfer of L1 conceptual planning process in constructing L2 discourse of motion events. With the Chinese uh, learners, they select relatively much information for verbalization. They broke the part trajectory into as many part segments and selected less amount of ground for verbalization, but they had tendency to switch so structure motion events into static physical context. Japanese as well, they, uh, as predicted by L1, they selected limited amount of mana for verbalization and broke part trajectory into less part segments and selected as much ground for verbalization and had stronger tendency to structure motion events into static physical context. But we see some changes happen, right? In part segments, Japanese learners, they show tendency to break the path trajectory into smaller part segments. We see that Chinese speakers selected more ground elements for globalization in L2. And we see Japanese learners, they shift to action-oriented perspective in structuring motion events in L2. But how about, but how about mana? Why mana is so different? We see not only Japanese learners, they remain at the same level in both L1 and L2, but also we see a decrease, a significantly Chinese dis dis decreased uh, the L2, uh, the mana encoding in L2. So why does the case of mana salience stand out? I guess I'm running out of my time, so I cannot illustrate this part, but if you're interested in learning more about this part, could you, you, you can contact with me and I'm going to use um, the conceptual transfer hypothesis in, from the Jarvis to, uh, to argue that mana transfer is, is different from, uh, from the transfer of other components that I studied in this study. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much for a comprehensive overview of uh, conceptual transfer in these languages. Um, so the floor is open. I see there is already one question in the chat. So Simona, would you like to um, ask your question? Uh, yes, um, probably I missed the information. So could you repeat the L2 proficiency level of learners, please? Okay, L2, yeah, I, I didn't have time to do this, sorry. I, I, they, they are, they are, there are some variations. So most of them are B2 level, uh, common European framework. Uh, 
and so uh, several of them them were C1 level. So um, but although we see some, we, there are some variations among them, but um, Japanese uh, learners and Chinese learners they are comparable. Uh, they are on the comparable level. So which which allowed me to to compare them. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, maybe I can ask one question. Um, in terms of the different hypotheses for these two groups of learners, could you elaborate a little bit on what you expected, how they would cope with this in in English as an L2? Oh, you hypothesis, okay. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, sorry, I didn't have time to show you that. Um, hypothesis is really based on cross-linguistic differences in L1 studies. So here we see, uh, for example, MANA. MANA is that um, Chinese, we see Chinese of quite comparable to English, but Japanese as a V language, they, they have very low uh, man encoding, low level of man encoding. And so for part segments, Japanese case stand out. Uh, in Ch again, Chinese case and English could be very comparable. And for grant, and, for grant is Chinese case stand out, stand because they, they have more minus grant verbs. But for uh, sing, sing, uh, settings, for the whole style, both Japanese case and Chinese case stand out. So I hypothesize that they they are hugely influenced by uh, how how they plan the whole whole discourse. But we see some changes happened in part segments, grand salience, and scene setting. We see that this L two restructuring really happened uh, according to the statistical results. But nothing really happened in manner salience. So this is why I'm going to argue manner salience transfer of manner salience. This whole conceptual planning process can could be very different from other parts of um, from other components and uh, based on uh, the, the framework of conceptual transfer hypothesis uh, by Jarvis. Yes. Oh, well, that makes a good transition to the question from uh, Rosa Alonso. Would you please formulate your question? Yeah, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, uh, good morning to everyone. Sorry, I missed part of the, your presentation, so I'm not sure if you already addressed this. I'd like to know if you analyzed only concept transfer or both concept and conceptualization transfer. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, yes, thank you so much for your question. I mean, you know, for, for, for a lot of previous studies, they just directly throw um, out transfer of motion events to conceptualization transfer. But what I couldn't make it uh, into this presentation, I'm going to argue that actually transfer of manner itself ha also has a lot to do with concept, the, the, the concept itself. Uh, let me explain a little bit here. I would say um, for, for S language and E languages, I, I argue that concept um, as a supporting, uh, manner as a supporting event is more closely related with motion compared to V language. V language, of course, manner is supporting event as well, but because it is often encoded um, in adjunct, so it's a little bit detached from motion itself. Using Slobin's argumentations, um, he argued that actually S language speakers, they have a more integrated view of motion and manner, but, um, but for V language speakers, they have more dichotomized view of manner and motion. If you ask like V language speakers, I, I mean, there are intertypological variations again, but if you ask Hebrew speakers or Japanese speakers, they say, we, we encode manner unless it's necessary. Otherwise we, we don't frequently encode it because, because I guess the language doesn't guide them to do so. So, so we do see that the, the stored nature of the concept, I mean, the relationship between manner and motion is different from is different in uh, between S language, E language, and V languages. So this should give rise to concept transfer, not not only in conceptualization transfer, because conceptualization transfer, I would say, it's more just like, you know, the concept themselves are not so different, but just how cross linguistic differences. Let's say path, ground. You, you basically encode path and ground in motion events in every language, right? Because it consists of the core schema in motion events. You cannot say, okay, I, I'm going to narrate a motion event without giving information of paths. 
you basically you cannot do that. So the, their, their, their differences, I, 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 I'm going to argue that actually arise more from um, just the cross-linguistic differences rather than from the nature of the, um, of the relationship between motion and manner. Well, thank you ever so much, uh, Jashen. I don't think there are further questions. Okay. So